True and Falsely Jesus in the Bible Part 2 Chapter 1 Truly Jesus The Genuine Image of Jesus in the Gospels It was one of Jesus' tasks to present himself clearly to his people, which he must surely have accomplished proficiently. The authors of the Gospels, who made the biography of Jesus the backbone of their writings, mention different narrations about Jesus' public appearances. It is possible then, to compile the words of Jesus about himself that were narrated in the four Gospels, and assemble them in a way to produce a genuine image of him thus. A humble human prophet who did not come of his own accord, but was sent by God with a doctrine was not of his own making, but from God who sent him, exclusively to the people of Israel. To confirm to them the true oneness of God, to show them the true path to salvation, to make their relation with God and himself, Jesus, above all other familiar relations. To fulfill the law and to bring a better, more holistic understanding of the commandments. To preach the kingdom of God and to call the sinners to repentance. His miracles were performed by the will of God alone, not by his own power, for he was powerless. Unable to do anything of himself, neither could he speak from his own authority, but from the authority of the true God who commanded him all that he should say. Thus, what the people heard from Jesus were not his words, but the words of God who sent him, for he never bears witness of himself, nor did he know about the unseen. He fulfilled his message and announced about the remaining final message to be brought by the final prophet to come after him to guide people into all truth. He prophesied the plot of the Jews to kill him, and also prophesied that God would rescue him. If you are surprised, my dear reader, to hear of Jesus in this light, and begin to wonder about the proofs, I wish to present the genuine image of Jesus. From Jesus himself as it narrated in the four Gospels. Jesus' humility, he objected to a Jewish leader's asking him, Good teacher what must I do to receive eternal life? Jesus said to him, before answering, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God. Luke 18 verses 18-19 also, Jesus said about himself, If I were to honor myself, that honor would be worth nothing. John 8 verse 54 His humanity, he declared before the Jews, But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. John 8 40 A prophet, when Jesus had come to his own country, Nazareth, he taught there and those who heard his teachings were amazed. They began to ask, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother? Called Mary? And his brothers James, Hoses, Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet respected everywhere except in his hometown and by his own family. Matthew 13 verses 54-57 Luke reported this episode with an additional wording from Jesus, A prophet is never welcomed in his hometown. Luke 4 verse 24 He did not come of his own accord, but was sent by God. Some of the people of Jerusalem said, When the Messiah comes, no one will know where he is from. And we all know where this man, Jesus, comes from. So Jesus said to them in a loud voice, You know me and you know where I am from. And I have not come of myself, but he who sent me is true, whom you do not know. John 7 verse 28 When some of the Jews were surprised and asked, How does this man know so much when he has never been to school? Jesus answered, My doctrine is not mine, but it comes from God. Who sent me? John 7 verse 16 He was sent to the people of Israel, i.e. the Jews, exclusively. He refused to heal a Canaanite girl, explaining to his disciples, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. Matthew 15 verse 24 His doctrine was not of his own making, but from God who sent him. And when Jesus used to send his disciples to preach, he would give them the following instructions, Do not go to any Gentile, non-Jew, territory or any Samaritan towns. Instead, you are to go to the lost sheep of the people of Israel, Matthew 10 verses 5-6. He came to the Jews to confirm to them the true oneness of God. When one of the scribes asked Jesus, 
which commandment was most important of all, Jesus replied, The most important one is this, Listen O Israel. The Lord our God the Lord is one. Mark 12 verse 29. He came to them to show them the true path to salvation. Jesus already explained to the Jews the way to their salvation, that they must believe that there is only one God, and Jesus as his messenger. He said, And this is eternal life, that they, the Jews, may know you the only true God, and to know Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. John 17 verse 3. He came to them to make their relationship with God and himself above all other relations. Therefore, any Jew who believed in Jesus as a true messenger was free of parents who disbelieved and denied him. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the world. No, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword I came to set sons against their fathers, daughters against their mothers, daughters-in-law against their mothers-in-law. A man's worst enemies will be the members of his own family. Matthew 10 verses 34-36 He came to them to fulfill the law. Jesus said, Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. Matthew 5 verse 17 He came to them to bring a better, more holistic understanding of the commandments. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, Do not commit adultery. But now I tell you, Anyone who looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So if your night eye causes you to sin, take it out and throw it away. It is much better for you to lose a part of your body than to have your whole body thrown into hell. Matthew 5 verses 27-29 He came to them to preach the kingdom of God. Jesus said to the people who tried to keep him from leaving, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God in other towns also, because that is what God sent me to do. Luke 4 verse 43 He came to them to call the sinners to repentance. Jesus said, For I did not come to call the righteous but sinners, to repentance. Matthew 9 verse 13 His miracles were performed by the will of God alone, not of his own ability. Jesus said to the Jews, But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Matthew 12 verse 28 and when Jesus tried to raise Lazarus from death by the will of God, he was at first groaning in himself. Then he lifted his eyes up towards the heavens and thanked God aloud for answering his request, I know that you always answer me, but I say this, e. Thanking God aloud, for the sake of the people who are standing here, so that they will believe that you sent me. John 11 verses 41-42 For Jesus was powerless. As are all creatures of God, unable to act without God's divine decree. Jesus said, I can of myself do nothing. I judge only as God tells me, so my judgment is right because I am not trying to do what I want, but only what He who sent me wants. John 5 verse 30 Nor could He speak on His own authority. It was God in truth who commanded Him to say what He said. So that what the people heard from Him was not His own words, but the very words of God who sent Him. Jesus said, For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the one who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. John 12 verse 49 And also he said, Whoever does not love me does not obey my teaching. And the teaching you have heard is not mine, but comes from the one who sent me. John 14 verse 24 For he never bore witness of himself. Rather, he said, If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. John 5 verse 31 Nor did he know about the unseen. He said, No one knows, however, when that day or hour will come, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, only the Father knows. Mark 13 verse 32 Jesus delivered his message and fulfilled his mission. He looked up towards heaven, saying, I have shown your glory on earth. I have finished the work you have given me to do. John 17 verse 4 And he gave announcement about another message to be brought by the final prophet, he who would come after Jesus to guide people into all truth. Jesus said, I have much more to tell you, but it would be too much for you to bear. However, when he, the Spirit of truth has come, who reveals the truth about God, he will guide you into all truth, 
for he will not speak on his own authority, but he will speak of what he hears. And he will tell you of things to come. John 16 verses 12 to 13. And he also said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper, who will stay with you forever. John 14 verse 16. He prophesied the plot of the Jews to murder him. When the Pharisees heard the crowd murmuring about the miracles of Jesus, they and the chief priests sent some guards to arrest him. Jesus said to them, I shall be with you a little while longer, and then I go away to him who sent me. You will look for me, but you will not find me, because you cannot go where I will be. John 7 verses 32-34 And he said to the Jews, But you seek to kill me, because my word has no place in you. John 8 verse 37 And he also said to them, But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. John 8 verse 40 He questioned them saying, Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keeps the law? Why do you seek to kill me? John 7 verse 19 He also prophesied that God would rescue him in the end. The author of John wrote that, Jesus had told the Jews that he would be with them a little while longer, and then he would be ascended to heaven. And he also challenged them to find him when they start to look for him. Because, he would be in a place that neither the Jews nor the disciples can go where he would be. Jesus said to the Jews, I shall be with you a little while longer, and then I go away to him who sent me. You will look for me, but you will not find me, because you cannot go where I will be. John 7 verse 34 And he also said to them, I am going away, and you will seek me, and will die in your sin. Where I go you cannot come. John 8 verse 21 He also confirmed the same to his disciples. He said, After Judas had left, my children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will look for me, but I tell you now what I told the Jews, you cannot go where I am going. John 13 verse 33 what was that place that Jesus pointed out to, and challenged both, the Jews and his disciples, to go there? Did he mean the heaven, or a place on earth to stay for a while before ascending to heaven? The author of John reported another texts indicate that the place was on earth, such. Jesus said to his disciples, A little while, and you will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me, because I go to the Father. John 16 verse 16 this text indicates that, the little while absence of Jesus would be just before his ascension to heaven. Then he would appear after his absence, because he would ascend to heaven, and then would be seen by the disciples. He also said to his disciples, I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. A little while longer in the world, the Jews, will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. John 14 verses 18-19 did Jesus mean that he would come to them descending from heaven to appear to them, and then ascend to heaven again? Surely not. So, he would come to them, walking out from a place on earth. He hid there. Then when he came out of that place, because he was live, only the disciples who saw him, but the Jews did not see him. He also said to his disciples, Most assuredly I say to you that you cry and weep, but the world will be glad. You will be sad, but your sadness will be turned into gladness. I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice. John 16 verses 20 and 22 This text indicates that the disciples would weep, lament and feel sad, thinking that their teacher was killed. And then their sadness would be turned into gladness, when Jesus come to them after the event of the crucifixion and see him, it is he, himself live. Surely, when the disciples saw Jesus, he was not descending to them from heaven, then ascended to heaven again, but he came to them from a place on earth. Finally, Jesus already had defeated the Jews. He said to his disciples, Be of good cheer, I have defeated the world, the Jews. John 16 verse 33 here, some texts of Jesus' appearance after the event of the crucifixion. To Mary Magdalene, Sunday morning, John 20 verses 14-17, to, to two of his followers, Sunday evening, 
Luke 24 verses 13 to 32, to his disciples, Mark 16 verse 11, Luke 24 verse 37, Matthew 28 verse 17. If the matter is like this, so, the appearances of all the previous texts indicate, and God knows best, that the rescue of Jesus consisted of the following two phases. First phase, Jesus would hide for some time, somewhere in Jewish territory. This hiding would be during the judicial proceedings, the crucifixion's day, and on Saturday. He had already challenged the Jews that they would not be able to come to his hiding place. And he also informed his disciples that they would not see him during those days, and that they would cry and mourn his departure. Second phase, when Jesus walked out of his hiding place in order to ascend to heaven, his disciples would see him alive, having defeated the world, the Jews, and their hearts would rejoice. While the Jews will see him no more. Other texts that indicate that Jesus prophesied about God's rescue. He said to his disciples, Indeed the hour is coming, yes has now come, that you will be scattered, each to his own, and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. John 16 verse 32 Also, Jesus said to the Jews who crowded around him asking him for a miracle. How evil are the people of this generation! They ask for a miracle, but none will be given them except the miracle of prophet Jonah. In the same way that the prophet Jonah was a sign for the people of Nineveh, so that Son of Man will be a sign for the people of this generation. Luke 11 verses 29-30 And what was the miracle of Jonah, that made him a sign for the people of Nineveh? It was his being rescued by God from death when he was thrown into the sea. In the same way, Jesus would be a sign for the people of his generation, by also being rescued by God from death when the Jews plotted to kill him. Matthew narrated this story in another way. When the scribes and Pharisees asked Jesus, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. Jesus answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Matthew 12 verses 38-40 also, already God foretold Jesus through his divine inspiration that he would rescue him and raise him up to heaven, thwarting the murderous plot of the Jews. Now, before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave the world and go to the Father. John 13 verse 1 More details about the crucifixion are in chapter 2. Who would understand Jesus better, the people around him, or those who came many years after him? Surely the people around Jesus would know him better. They believed in him as no more than a human prophet sent to the people of Israel with miracles performed by God through him, we can read this in the following texts. From the Apostle Peter He said, Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus of Nazareth was a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God performed through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. Acts 2 verse 22 From Cleopa and his companion. They witnessed the things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. Luke 24, verse 19. From Nicodemus. The Pharisee who came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher sent by God. No one could perform the miracles you are doing unless God were with him. John 3 verse 2 From the multitude of Jews Who said, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Matthew 21 verse 11 And from the multitudes About whom was written, when the chief priests and the Pharisees tried to arrest Jesus, but they were afraid of the multitudes, who considered Jesus to be a prophet. Matthew 21 46 and from the multitudes. Who, when Jesus raised a dead man by God's will and fear came upon them, glorified God saying, A great prophet has appeared among us. And God has come to save his people. Luke 7 verse 16. And also from the multitudes. Who, when they witnessed the miracle of Jesus blessing the food, declared, Surely this is the prophet who was to come into the world. John 6 verse 14. 
This is truly Jesus, and that is his genuine image and the reality of his mission. This is how he presented himself and this is how he asked people to believe of him. And that is indeed the truth with which true believers believed, those who followed the apostles' teachings. But, unfortunately, this true, genuine image of Jesus did not persist. It became lost and was instead replaced by a fake image, one that was manufactured during the first century after his ascension and then spread all over the world. The aspects of this fake image are characterized in some books of the New Testament. However, none of the fakery can be evidenced from Jesus' own words. The most amazing thing is the great efforts by some to avoid the clear-cut texts that were spoken by Jesus himself concerning his true nature and mission. Instead, they rely on other texts that were apparently of doubts and conjecture, were also said by Jesus, to justify their holding to fake image. So before deconstructing the fake image of Jesus, it may be prudent to first answer the doubts upon which it is based. Jesus answers some doubts. 1. I and my Father are one, John 10 verse 30. This verse is customarily quoted out of context. The context being an argument that occurred in the temple between Jesus and the Jews, as was reported in John 10 verses 23 to 30. The Jews gathered around Jesus asking him, Are you the Messiah? Jesus answered them, I have already told you, but you would not believe me. The miracles I do by God's authority speak on my behalf, but you will not believe, for you are not my sheep my sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. No one can snatch them away from me, and no one can snatch them away from the Father's care. I and my Father are one. John 10 verses 23-30 so clearly, Jesus did not intend that he and God are one person, one being, one God. Because God and Jesus are two different, distinct and separate personages, God is above the universe, a separate and distinct being, while Jesus was another being entirely, a human. Mortal Messenger Walking Upon the Earth What Jesus obviously meant was that he carry out the orders of God towards the Jews. Both God and Jesus wanted the same thing from those Jews. And what he was preaching to them was not his own truth, but the truth of God himself, Asha's already preceded. He did not appoint himself to them, but was appointed by God himself. So any Jew who believed in Jesus was by default and of necessity also a believer with God, because Jesus and God were one. A unity of purpose with God towards the Jews. Explicit proof for this understanding comes from Jesus' own words. For when he was, about to depart, he prayed to God to cover all his disciples with his protection and keep them all one, in the same way that he and God were one. Jesus said, Now I am no longer in the world, but these, the disciples, are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me that they may be one as we are, 1, John 17 verse 11. If Jesus and God were one person, one being, one God, so was Jesus asking God, himself, to make the twelve disciples also into one person, one being, just as he and God are one? Or was he praying to him that they may be united in purpose with God in precisely the same way that he was united with God? In another place, Jesus said, I do not pray for these, disciples, alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their words. That they may be one, as you Father are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. John 17 verses 20-22 Hence, if someone is prepared to believe that Jesus and God together constitute one existential being, then they, he, must also be prepared to believe that at least twelve other persons. The disciples, also constitute component parts of the, one, divine being. Furthermore, we read in the Bible, he was received up into heaven, and sat down right hand of God. Mark 16 verse 19. Here, the Bible clearly speaks of two different, distinct personages, metaphysically separated from each other. Only one of the two is God. Anyone claims that both of them are God, no longer has one God, but two. 2. The Son of God 
What about Jesus calling himself Son of God and calling God his Father? The term Son of God is a translation of a Hebrew expression for honoring and tribute, not to meant to be taken literally. This term can be directed, in the Hebrew vernacular, to a prophet sent by God, or a nightiest person close to God. This is how Jesus himself explained the term to the Jews, as is reported in John 10 verses 31-36. If the matter is like this, so, did other prophets share Jesus the same expression? Or was it used exclusively for Jesus? Well, let us see what the Bible say about this matter. He, Solomon, will build a temple for me. He will be my son, and I will be his father. 1 Chronicles 22 verses 6-10 then you shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel, Jacob, is my son, my first B.O.M. Exodus 4 verse 22 For I, God, am a father to Israel, and Ephraim, the son of Joseph the son of Jacob, is my firstborn. Jeremiah 31 verse 9 Son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Luke 3 verse 38 In numerous passages, we also find the Bible mentioning a plurality of sons of God. For example, the sons of God saw the daughters of men. Genesis 6 verse 2. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Matthew 5 verse 9. According to the Bible, Jesus would ask people to call God their Father as well as His. In Matthew we read, Pray, Our Father in Heaven. Matthew 6 verse 9. While in John, it is reported that Jesus said, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. John 20 verse 17 Clearly the literal meaning of a father who begets children is never meant. If so, then many prophets besides Jesus, in fact, any righteous believer and peacemaker, are all equally begotten of God. God forbid. Rather, Father, in the original context of the Hebrew Bible refers to God the merciful Lord, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds. There is no real fatherhood with God, nor a physical kinship between Him and Jesus or any prophet or person. It does not befit the divinity and the majesty of God that He should beget or sire a son. God is not a father of any creature and one must be careful not to degrade His essence, which is eternal and divine, by describing Him with a mortal and earthly attribute. Such as, Father, even though a person may not intend it literally. Incidentally, in the Bible there is another term for addressing a mortal, human being that is even greater than the term, Son of God. This term is, God, itself. For example, Exodus 7 verse 1 reads, So the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron your brother shall be your prophet. Hence, if the title of Jesus in the Bible is, Son of God, then Moses ought to be referred to with the even greater title, as God, itself. Also, in the book of Psalms, we are told that God addressed the judges of Israel as both, God's, and his children. I said you, the judges, are God's, and all of you are the children of the Most High. Psalm 82 verse 6 Surely, the literal meaning of the terms Son of God, or as God, or God, when addressing a human in the Hebrew language, was never meant to be taken literally, but the figurative meaning. It is something unbelievable when one insists on calling Jesus the Son of God and understanding it in a literal sense. While Jesus himself already clarified the true intended meaning of the term Son of God when he addressed it to himself, and the term God when addressed to a human. Though the explanation of Jesus for both terms, Son of God, and God, when they addressed to a human, is clear and lucid, in practice it is only partially accepted. That is, his explanation for the true meaning of the human judges being called, gods, is acceptable but not his explanation for the true meaning of his being called the, Son of God, instead. Still many insist that Jesus is a real, begotten Son of God. And here is where the deviation from Jesus' own teaching lies. The explanation of Jesus is reported in John 10 verses 31-36, where Jesus and the Jews were arguing in the temple. The Jews picked up stones to throw at Jesus, so he said to them, I have done many good deeds, dot e, miracles, in your presence, which the Father gave me to do. For which one of these do you want to stone me? 
The Jews answered him saying, We do not want to stone you because of any good deeds, but because of your blasphemy. You are only a man, but you are trying to make yourself God, because he told them that he was the Son of God. Surely, the Jews knew the exact meaning of, Son of God, because their books were replete with this term in addresses to the prophets. However, in the episode of the temple mentioned above, the Jews were simply being argumentative. And how, dear reader, did Jesus answer those Jews who accused him of blasphemy? It was a critical moment for Jesus to determine his real essence in front of those people, he to whom he was sent, whether he was an actual son of God or merely a human messenger. It is more than reasonable to assume that Jesus, at that moment, would not hesitate, nor be afraid or feel ashamed to declare his reality before them. Jesus would, by no means, willingly mislead or deceive the people by resorting to a false or politically expedient answer. Rather, his answer would be clear, comprehensive and conclusive. And it would be a proof for the true faith in him through generations till the time of his second coming, when all the truth will be manifested to those people living then. Jesus answered them saying, It is written in your own law, Psalm 826, that God said. You are gods. And if God called those people, the judges, gods, the people to whom his message was given. How then can you say of me, whom the Father sanctified and sent into the word that I blaspheme because I said that I am the Son of God? John 10 verses 34-36 Jesus cornered the Jews using a text from the Old Testament, Psalms 82. 6. How could they accuse him of blasphemy and stone him for using the figurative meaning of the well-known Hebrew expression, Son of God, while their book, Psalms 82. 6. Had called the judges of Israel, gods. Jesus reminded those Jews about the figurative meaning of the term, Son of God, that it referred to one who was sanctified by and sent from God. Even the term, God, itself could be used free of any immortal connotations when referring to those to whom the message of God was given, such the judges of Israel in Psalm 82 verse 6, and Moses in Exodus 7. 1. Luke also reported about the angel who spoke to Mary, the mother of Jesus, saying, He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. Luke 1. 32. Thus, Jesus was not a literal Son of God, but a man to be called with such a title due to his greatness. Finally, if Jesus used to say clearly about himself that he was, the Son of Man. And he meant the figurative meaning when he used the term, the Son of God, John 10. 36. So, who then blaspheme? Is not he the one who considers Jesus a real son of God was begotten of him? And here is the risk of this faith and worst indeed is the destination.